Hello, everybody. If you've been paying attention, you know that the United States has pledged to triple their nuclear capacity by 2050. And now the Biden administration is actually presenting a roadmap in which they outline how they want to do it. And we are going to go over this roughly, uh, look at some interesting developments and see what we can learn. Now, I made this picture. Uh, <laughs> Unfortunately, my face is right in front of it. So basically, uh, this is uh, President Biden saying, please accept my farewell gift. Um, what has been pretty consistent over the last couple of years is that both Republicans and Democrats are supportive of nuclear energy. So what is really interesting, and that, that's why I made this goofy picture over here, what you see is the White House, I mean, a big bag of presents, and basically Biden and Trump, they're waving at each other friendly and saying, listen, here's my bag of presents, please uh, unpack everything and have, have fun with it. Let's hope that that is going to be the transition this year, uh, rather than the one that we had four years ago. Uh, in any case, uh, the question will be, will the Trump administration uh, agree with this new policy? So first, uh, we go and look at the documents. So I will make sure that a link is available in the description down below. Uh, they call it safely and responsibly expanding U.S. nuclear energy deployment target and a framework for action. Now, this is this is all pretty interesting. It's 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 a load of text. I'm not going to uh, go over everything of it. Uh, you know, it, it 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 doesn't make sense to do all of that. But this is basically uh, the main focus of this roadmap. They want to jumpstart the nuclear energy deployment ecosystem with 35 gigawatts of new capacity by 2035 that will be operating or under construction. So that's 10 years from now. They want to have 35 gigawatts of additional capacity in the works or already operational by that time. Accelerating the capabilities of the nuclear energy deployment ecosystem. And I like that word, nuclear energy deployment ecosystem, because that's very important. By ramping to a sustained pace of producing 15 gigawatts per year by 2040 in support of both U.S. and global project development. Now, this is very interesting because this also tells you that the current administration says, listen, if we want to do nuclear, we have to have uh, everything working in, 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 in top order. I'm not talking about the reactors themselves and, and, and the power plants themselves, but we're talking about everything from the organizations that have to plan, finance, and execute the construction of nuclear power plants to everything that is involved. You know, making sure that the supply chain is up and running, making sure that all the people who work at these places know what is expected of them. Uh, so, so this is going to be a massive, basically a, 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 a mega jobs program. It's going to be a mega construction program. And, and, and this almost, to me, looks like it, it, it's a mesmer-like plan. This is the best that the United States has done in the past years. And I really hope, I really hope that our Republican friends uh, can see that this is a good idea. Now, what is the low-hanging fruit? Because this 2035 target is pretty ambitious. So... First, we're going to look at a map of the United States where we can see all current nuclear power plants. That's over here. I've put placeholders all over the map where you can see where there are nuclear power plants. The blue ones are operational. The black ones were shut down. The green ones are the ones that are being restarted or are or, or can be restarted potentially. And the purple ones, those are basically construction licenses for new reactors uh, but that have either been withdrawn, were never issued, or are suspended, or are basically, uh, you know, left out to hang. The, these, the, the ones that have not been withdrawn, have not been suspended, uh, but are still issued, basically these are construction projects waiting to happen. Now, obviously, it's not simple because you need, again, you need to have an organization who can plan this construction project and who can execute the, the construction project. And they need to be able to buy all the equipment that they need to build this entire plant. 
nothing about this is easy. But if we look at the bureaucracy that needs to be done, that these are basically uh, the projects that we need to uh, start working on. So the combined licenses, right? That's that, that's what we see over here. Now let me move my face around to this side because then you can see what is happening. So all of these uh, projects uh, were issued at one point. Now some of them have been suspended, right? So some of these uh, construction licenses are no longer active. Now these are also suspended. Uh, they never made it to the issued uh, phase. But once issued, they can still be suspended again. And over here, these were uh, basically uh, license applications where the, the licensee basically said, okay, we're not going forward with this process. We, we stop requesting the license and, and they basically withdrew. So if we look at all these reactors over here, uh, we start with the AP1000s. Now, the interesting bit is, can we revive Colts? That's the, the central question, because we need to get to 35 gigawatts by 2035. You want to find the low-hanging fruit. And at this moment, the AP1000 is the low-hanging fruit. There's just nothing that you could say that would convince me otherwise. The AP1000 is over the first hurdle, over the first two hurdles. There are two units operational in the United States. I believe that there are four units operational in, in, in China at this moment. So... There is experience building these things. There is experience making the making the components for these reactors, and at this moment, this can be capitalized upon. You can actually uh, start uh, building these reactors again. Let me put my face back in its place. So the interesting uh, the interesting bit here is suppose that we would build all the AP one thousands that were ever. Uh, basically considered where an actual license application started, then we could potentially build 26.4 gigawatts, which is which brings you a whole lot closer to reaching the 35 gigawatts. That it doesn't look like a pie in the sky if you would actually build these AP1000s. I believe it's 12 of them. So VC Summer, that one has been basically abandoned. They started building that that plant, but unfortunately it was abandoned due to, to due to cost overruns, and they basically terminated the project. The coal was terminated as well. Then we have Turkey Point Six and Seven. That coal is still active. Levy Point One and Two coal terminated. William States Lee, the coal is still alive, and then we have two other. Um, projects that never came to fruition. Now, if we go to the AP1000 coal uh, map, then you can see all of those calls basically were issued in the southeast of the United States. One in Florida, one in Alabama. I believe that it is two in South Carolina, one in Georgia, and one in North Carolina. Now, we have, we can zoom in on these places. Most of them have active nuclear power plants. As you can see, Balfonte, two pressurized water reactors. If we zoom out and we go over here, I believe that this over here is William States Lee. Uh, was there ever a nuclear power plant here? Doesn't look like it because there's, there's some, some of these power plants, there was no nuclear power plant before they actually started considering building a nuclear power plant there. Uh, but over here, you can see uh, there is a nuclear power plant over here, Sheoran Harris. Let's see. Yes, over here, a pressurized water reactor. Again, one unit, if I'm not mistaken. So you can see there's there's at least six locations. And over here is VC Summer. Yeah, so there's six locations. One, two, three, four, five, six, where AP1000s were considered. And there's one location where actually a an AP1000 was built now the next low hanging fruit low hanging fruit is the esbwr and the ebwr so this is the uh, the, 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 the economically simplified boiling water reactor and the advanced boiling water reactor unfortunately esbwr doesn't mean that it is a cheaper 
reactor because the ABWR still is cheaper than, than, than the other one. If they build all these reactors, then the, the, then the potential would be 9.6 gigawatts. And if we look at which coals are still alive, then Fermi Unit 3, the coal is still alive. And then we have North Anna Unit 3, that coal is also still still alive. And there were also two advanced boiling water reactors licensed. Unfortunately, those calls were terminated, but those were uh, planned at the South Texas project. So first we go to Fermi, which is over here. And what is this? Michigan, I believe. Yeah. So Fermi over here, we have a boiling water reactor. I don't know. This looks like a pressurized water reactor, but they used to build boiling water reactors with containment domes as well. So I'm not sure. So that's in Michigan. Then we have North Anna 3 over here. And, and, and you know from, from, from the, the number of the name, you know, North Anna 3, that that would be the third unit active at that site. So again, two reactors built over here. This is, this is, this is nice. You can, you can actually see, you know, the, 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 the switch yard. Uh, you can also see over here, there's the spent nuclear fuel. So somewhere around here, uh, a ESBWR was planned one day and is still planned. If they want, they can actually build it. And then we get the South Texas project over here, right? So here is the nuclear power plant, two pressurized water reactors. They wanted to build two advanced boiling water reactors. Well, stands the reason that they wanted to build them over here somewhere. Uh, looking from, you know, looking at how this cooling water reservoir is made. I mean, these are these are pretty interesting sites. Uh, but the most important bit here is that we want to know, you know, how much potential there is. So if they would have built two ABWRs, the potential would have been roughly 2.7 gigawatts. Now, if we then basically look at the total potential, so let's suppose that we revive all these calls, we, we, we restart the license applications that were not finished, and we, we basically uh, unterminate the terminated calls, then the total potential is more than 35 gigawatts. That's, uh, that's, that's pretty neat. And, and if we look at what is still alive, so out of all these licenses, which are still basically ready to go, then that's already 7.6 gigawatts. So if the Trump administration wants to capitalize on this promise that they want more nuclear, then this is the way to go. See how you can expedite the process of starting these projects and think, think about how you can do this better. There's also another option. So basically what we do, or what I've done here, is basically I've looked at all the sites, all the sites where there was a new power plant planned. I'm not including the black ones, but those are sites that really need to be considered for whatever you want to build, right? Because over here, for instance, is India Point, is highly questionable whether you can actually build something new there. Uh, but you should consider it. But if you take all these uh, places where a license was once issued or where a license application was started, and you would say, okay, let's, let's redo everything. We make everything an AP1000. Then this is what you go, you're going to get, 70.2 gigawatts of potential. You could potentially build 70.2 gigawatts of AP1000s. So that's 16 AP1000s. Well, that's not 16 AP1000s. Sorry, I need to correct myself. So that, that, that is 32 AP1000s. And we also have to remember that the United States aims for adding 200 gigawatts on top of the 100 gigawatts that is existing. So if you would do 70 gigawatts of, of, of AP1000s, that would bring you... A long way ahead but this is the kind of thinking that you need if you want to build 200 gigawatts of nuclear the low-hanging fruit is the ap1000 at this moment that's where you should start your nuclear build out make it a program build 32 ap1000s that's a program that's that's making sure that the entire industry knows what they, what they need to build but that doesn't mean that this is the only thing that you need to build because 70 gigawatts i mean you're still 130 gigawatts short 
So what else is there? Well, we have the, the data center nuclear movement right now, which you're seeing with Google and with Amazon and with Microsoft and, and Meta. Every, every, everybody is trying to get their hands in the nuclear pie. Uh, they're reviving nuclear reactors, such as Three Mile Island, but some are also considering of using small modular reactors to power their data centers. We have two concrete examples of this. We have the Kairos molten salt cooled pebble bed reactor which is 75 megawatts and they want to install two reactors per power plant and then you have the x energy gas cooled pebble bed reactor which is 100 megawatts but it's pretty interesting i'm absolutely willing to see what is going on with these and whether they are going to work or not now this is also very interesting because obviously we have the large reactors we have the smaller reactors there's a couple of them that are you know potentially viable for electricity production think about the x300 by ge dutchy or the ap300 by westinghouse new scale is a bit of a mixed bag currently uh, especially given the failure of their new amps uh, project we don't know whether they can survive this uh, this this situation and then there are some 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 slightly more exotic ones that are you know if they have to compete with light water reactors for pure electricity production, they make not as much sense. But if you need high heat for retrofitting coal plants, for instance, then think about old coal, Terra Power or Tresso Energy. First two are liquid metal fast breeder reactors. And then Tresso Energy is a molten salt reactor. Also prepared a map. Uh, just look at the potential for coal retrofits here you know there's a huge pool of coal plants in the united states that are that can potentially be retrofitted to becoming a nuclear power plant and i think that this would be great and i wonder whether the trump administration thinks that this is a good idea as well um i don't know uh, I, I do think it is a very good idea because it it, it would clean up the air uh, it, if only that is the goal you know cleaning up the air because coal does pollute a lot um then then going these th this route these small modular reactors that have a high heat output that would make coal retrofits more viable now the question is are we really in the twilight zone because uh, it feels like it it feels like we are in the twilight zone the question is will the good policies of the biden administration survive the trump administration will trump actually see that this is something good for the united states if he does and he doubles down on on, on this plan and he says okay we're going to execute this and we're going to make sure that we're going to build 200 gigawatts of nuclear power because that's what constitutes energy security and that's also a way of, of establishing energy dominance then i will see this succeed but if they if they say okay well this requires the government to be too big and we're going to do this efficiency thing that elon musk is is, is taking a lead on and, and 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 this 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 plan is too expensive and we're going to tone it down well, then, then basically, you know, I, I would consider that a big loss. So we, all, everything is up in the air right now. Yes, the ambition is good. The goals are good. There is huge potential here. Uh, I've shown you by building AP1000s alone at places where nu new nuclear power plants have been considered could yield more than 70 gigawatts of new nuclear power. But times are uncertain we don't know what is going to happen now with that you've reached the end of this video as you hear i'm losing my voice unfortunately i really want to urge everybody if you want to support the channel please become a paying patreon member and unfortunately thanks to the air pollution from burning wood my airways are having trouble so with that we've made it to the end of this video i really want to thank my paying patreon members if you want to support the channel please go to patreon and become a paying member tier one or five if you have the money uh, would be greatly appreciated because obviously i need to feed my family now if you have anything to add please leave a comment down below to contribute to the discussion and if you like this video please leave a like if you disliked it press the thumbs down button and if you haven't already please subscribe to the channel now thank you all for watching and may the strong force be with you bye bye
Wow.